I can tell you what Mayor Corning told me. First of all, Corning didn't get along with Rockefeller. Rockefeller had a place in Maine and so did the Cornings and there, that's where the similarity ended. And when Rockefeller came in, he immediately started by investigating using the state SIC, State Investigative Commission, from, it was a very adversarial situation. It also was with, uh, with Dewey. And uh, the mayor was told about the Empire State Plaza. Well, first of all, the, the Princess Beatrix, now Queen Beatrix uh, deal. Uh, Corning was telling me that uh, uh, he went to the dedication of the Empire State Plaza in 1971 or two, you know, where they have that plaque there. And uh, Rockefeller was saying, you know, remember when, uh, remember when we stood before the, uh, the railroad station and the parade came down, this was the Hudson Fulton, uh, 1959. I always remember it because I marched in it for CBA. It was the first parade ever marched behind so horses. So you, <laughs> you learned that maybe a perfectly straight line wasn't the right thing to do. And uh, Corning said, no. He said, wait, no, no, you, you remember. He said, I remember the parade, but we weren't in front of the railroad station. He said, yeah, you know, the, the, the building down there, the one with the boat on top of it, and so on and so forth. And Corning said, Governor, that wasn't the railroad station. That was the headquarters of the Delaware and Hudson Railroad. It's an office building. So the train doesn't pull up there, and people don't. <laughs> no, no, he said, that's about three blocks in the opposite direction. That was how well he knew Albany. And as far as the embarrassment of driving through this rundown city, I don't, there are reasons and there are excuses. Rockefeller loved to build. He built Stony Brook and Albany out here and Buffalo and Binghamton into magnificent campuses. He, he changed the string of old state teachers colleges into a modern university system. He always wanted to have more students than California had, despite the, even then it was twice as large. Rockefeller built everywhere. The thought that Rockefeller would come to Albany for any period of time and not put his mark on it, with or without Princess Beatrix's visit, to me is, is something that I couldn't imagine. Uh, so I'm not sure how, mu how much of that was a reason versus an excuse. When, when the mayor was called up to the Capitol, it was on a Thursday, and he was told, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take 98 acres. We're going to go from State Street all the way over to Lincoln Park. We're going to figure out something to do with that new executive house, apartment house that, uh, that Bill mentioned. And, you know, we probably won't take that and we won't take the cathedral, but here's what we're going to build. By Monday, that was in the newspaper. The city of Albany was so enthusiastic that they sued because they were losing over the course of time when cities were really starting to hurt. Uh, they were losing millions upon millions of dollars in tax revenue to run the city. And that's why Corning ran the place right into the ground, because he had a choice of either raising the, the taxes and driving people out, or uh, just ignoring the whole thing and, and trying to limp through. So he limped through and he just overspent and overspent. So the city's deficit by the early 70s was 50% of his budget. And we're not talking debt, we're talking deficit. And then, then the day of reckoning came, but by that time, the mall was starting to open up and it was starting to turn more into an asset and less of a liability, which it was for a decade or more, plus the loss of 7,200 people. Uh, always resented the idea that it was a slum. Remember the Jefferson Street neighbors coming back year after year and then every five years? People don't have reunions in slums. They're glad to get away from them. But... What happened is Rocky just went, won the lawsuit on eminent domain. There was no scoping, no seeker money, no environmental surveys in those days. You just took it. And uh, the city lost its lawsuit. The mall was built. Originally, they would tear down the buildings with great finesse and recycle everything. And they realized it would take them forever. And then the building a day rule went out. And you, the neighbors would have to run in by night and rescue uh, doors and woodwork and stained glass and fireplaces or mantelpieces, anything they could. But then the blitz really happened. And uh, I cast my only vote, it's safe to say it now, for a Republican governor uh, when uh, Goldberg ran. 
because Goldberg came into Albany and he said, if I am elected, I will stop the building of the Empire of the South Mall, as it was called. And at that point, in the late 60s, the only thing worse than the mall was half a mall. <laughs> and, uh, but eventually it got finished. In the process, Rockefeller was paying it almost to pay as you go and taking certain vague bonds that were authorized for the state of New York for general purpose. And what killed Rocky was the, and it got him ultimately politically, was the Vietnam War. Because with the Vietnam War, you had a labor shortage, a material shortage, god awful inflation that kept going up. So the mall, which was supposed to be $400 million, suddenly was a billion dollar mall. And in order to keep the labor unions happy, and they didn't want any labor uh, interruptions or stoppages, they just told the contractors, cost plus 10%. You go cost plus 10%, no problem. So everything, you know, there was no incentive to keep down either the cost or the 10%, of course, rose accordingly. And finally, he got in serious trouble. And at that point, it was time to talk to Erastus Corning. And Erastus Corning and Gene Devine, who was the uh, county treasurer, uh, sat down with the Rockefeller people. It was all a very true story and directly from the, the mayor's mouth. And they went and they talked to the uh, Rockefeller, had his people from the Rockefeller family advisors and so on. And, and it was, you know, what are we going to do? And Corning said, well, in, in New York State, obviously you issue bonds, but it's highly unlikely that people in Buffalo are going to be thrilled voting yes on bonds for an office complex in Albany. He said, however, we do not have referendums on bonds for counties because counties did very little. Once in a while, a nursing home, sometimes a, uh, uh, an airport, but they had a huge bonding ability that in fact didn't even have a cap because they did so very little. County roads, that was it. So he said, if you would sell us the mall for a dollar, you know, we didn't argue with the price, sell it to us, we'll give you a guarantee, we'll sell it back to you for a dollar. And then we'll rent it to you for whatever the interest rates are for servicing the bonds and the principal, of course. At the end of the period, your 40-year bonds, at the end of the period, you can have it back for a dollar. So up until 2004, the Empire State Plaza was a county-owned facility. And it became very significant politically when uh, Rocky was doing something against the uh, Democratic machine, of course, he had national ambitions, as you know, and like Dewey, he would have loved to have toppled the whole thing, and uh, was doing something the city was not happy with. And the routine sales of the bonds were supposed to take place in the, above the front steps of the courthouse, and down came uh, John Klein, who was the county attorney, no county executive in those days, and announced to all these big financiers, because it's done in an archaic system of, of bidding on what you'll pay for the bonds, that the bond issuance, issuance and auction was canceled until further notice, no date. And the Times Union said, why? And the answer, which was in the headline, for various and sundry reasons. <laughs> So now Rockefeller had the half a mall and realized that it wasn't so easy. And at that point, they had to sit down and come to some kinds of terms. I forget what awful menace went away for a while. And uh, the bonds were sold again. The mall was finished. And in, in 2004, the state of New York finally owned the Empire State Plaza. But that's the story. It was not a Ford Orange Club deal because they weren't that cordial uh, in the beginning. In the end, they learned to work together and, and did very well.